Thank you for joining us today. Today I have Montserrat with me. She is a former client and a participant in our PNES support group, recovery group, and she is in the UK. So she makes great efforts to join us because we have about six hours difference, but she has absolutely been dedicated. It's been so great to know you, Montserrat. Montserrat is in a process of her recovery story. She, and she's actively working to overcome uh, her PNES. She's tearing down the masks that she used to put up before. She's living more of her authentic self. And in her own words, she said she's in her transformation process. This is like a new birth going from the caterpillar to the butterfly. So Montserrat, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, <laughs> Would you mind sharing with everybody, and I, I want to say thank you in advance for your vulnerability. Would you mind sharing with everybody when PNES started for you and how long of the journey this has been? Um, I believe personally that I've had a different form of this, like um, from childhood to um, a young adult, because um, I would have like little mild um, things and situations like, Getting to turn off the um, cooker, and getting really dizzy, and just seeing like the floor moving, and so it really. And I believe that I didn't really listen to those signs of um, that situation. So I, I think in the past four four years, I think that it 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 came into like the full blown. Yeah, PNES and um, it was like it forced me and I wasn't listening I was like thinking why is this happening to me because I I suddenly got a job that I loved and it was like oh my gosh what why now and I was actually thinking of doing driving lessons as well and this all that was just on the backbone and um, yeah so it's like for about a year and a half, maybe two years, I was um, I wasn't like listening to my seizures. I wasn't take and um, I was just continuing trying to find a new job, trying to be more active and um, going being with the public as in. And then um, I kind of thought, Do you know what, I need to rest need to actually just take a minute and see what happens and so I just looked and um, it was so I started to listen and I was listening and I was like ah if I go here this happens if I eat this kind of food this happens so I started to really listen to my seizures and it was like 50% every time I listened to it it was like it eased off yeah. a lot it was like so it's like a message telling me oh you can't you can't do this because it's ain't good for you yeah. that doesn't make sense so absolutely i recognize so, that. i had the same experience with mine and um i and i and i do and i do thank i'm i'm thankful for these because otherwise i would have done i would have gone this direction, does that make sense to you? Oh, absolutely. You know what, I really appreciate uh, the fact that that you look at these with gratitude. You look through eyes of, of gratitude when you look at this experience. And I've heard you say that multiple times in the past that if this hadn't happened, you would still be on the same course. So mm -hmm. would you mind sharing with us a little bit why you believe that these started for you? I believe that um, I was avoiding, like, um, I think from, uh, let's just say, even though I had a good home in foster care, every I believe that every foster, every child in foster care have some kind of, like, abandonment issues or certain kind of issues. Mm -hmm. and, and I believe I didn't really doubt with that. Then I also believe um, from my nan's passing away, I didn't really grieve at the time. Mm. I took, so I think 
combining a lot of things in as um childhood and my nan passing away. She was the one constant person in my life. And I believe that just erupt in in fully blown like um seizures. And I started off with the um absences mm -hmm. and then it started to become like um full on um jerk moments. Mm -hmm. I would have like actually at one point it was like um every day about fifty to forty seizures in the day. And then um and of course you come out of it but you know it it doesn't come out you don't just come out of it, does it? It takes a while before you come out of it. So Montserrat, you noticed that because of your specific uh, situation being a foster child, there were certain themes that came out of it with abandonment and there was grief also that entered into your, into your life. So at what point, what was the tipping point? Where did you see a change in your seizures? When did they start to decrease? Um, I would say it started to decrease about, um, I would say about a year, about, yeah, give or take about a year, year and a half. And um, I started to, and it was like, as soon as I, it was like, um, I started to, because um, I was thinking about myself, I was just, yeah, it was the best, and I, and normally I do things because, how can I say this? Not because other people, what is kind of, I'd be like, I don't mind. Is that kind of, you know, instead of actually thinking about what do I actually want in life. And um, it started to decrease when I basically um, just kept to myself for a while because. Um, you mean isolate? You isolate? Yeah. Yeah, I isolated for a little while. I needed to be that cocoon mm -hmm. because I needed to listen to basically my thoughts and bring up certain things that actually I avoided in the past. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and it was um yeah, so I had to really listen to that. And it was um yeah, so it started to decrease and stuff and it started to um decrease in big moments it wasn't like gradually it was just like a release every time i released something it just released and it was and i thought ah oh. that's when i started to listen to listen to my seizures because i was like ah this is what you want me to do this is what so and i Tell me about some of those aha moments. What were some of the things that you released that, what were the changes that you were making? I was changing certain people in my um, friend, in my friend zone. Mm -hmm. Because um, I would say there wasn't, I'm going to say sometimes people just don't click anymore. People grow up, grow in different directions and they want to stay the same. And so, yeah, so I just, and I need, and it's funny, I needed to move on, but they were still trying to keep me in this mold. But then again, they were being more emotional abusive in some form of way. In that, so, and I, and I, and I kind of thought, you know what, I don't need this. So I kind of just, just deleted everything and just, went on and also I would say I when I started to change my food habit, habit and stuff it was a case of um there's certain foods that I didn't I couldn't eat no more it doesn't mean that I it was just certain things that I couldn't do anymore like coffee potatoes mm -hmm. and um this other stuff bread and so I used to go to my foster sister's house for Sunday dinners. And um, I believe, I personally believe they thought they were doing the right thing. But if they, it was like they forgot my personality. So it was like, they, it's like they didn't get it. 
think and understand how they're being really overprotective or totally or totally not. So it's, 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 it's weird. And um, so, yeah, so when I started and I kept going, I got, um, I didn't like roast dinners anymore. I just like literally just turned off roast dinners. So I just thought, you know, what if I just stay at home for it? So, and it worked and it's nothing against my foster family. It just, I just had to do that for me. And, and yeah, and totally, it just worked. It's like, did you oh. that? Um, I apologize. Uh, did you find that coming back, isolating, listening to yourself? Did you find that you became the real you? That yeah. you were bending and shaping yourself to whatever environment you were in, which a lot of people say is is that's a benefit. That's the ability to do that is beneficial. But if you do not fitting in and being comfortable anywhere is very different than changing yourself to the environment. So becoming a chameleon is very different than being comfortable in any of our environments. Did you find yourself doing that where you were changing yourself, your nature, your personality traits even to accommodate? I would say some most of the time yeah it was like i I've, I've hidden for instance um my holistic stuff my family didn't really know they knew that i did it but they didn't really know to the extent that that made sense mm -hmm. and i've hid it because some of them didn't um they wasn't really into it so there was no point and then um at all and the case with my friends it was like sometimes they would mimic what I was doing they would they couldn't find their own niche mm. and I and I all and it was like oh okay but then but like I said I reduced my friendship it was like I always knew in life you get five friends by at least five real friends and um so I I did. I, I thought, you know what? It's good to have real friends than actually have friends that's going to try and, and stab you in the back and stuff like that. So that's what I did. And it was okay. As soon as I did that, it was just like a weight off my shoulders. It was like, because I was picking them up, my friends up, instead of picking myself up. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. So being authentic to yourself in all your different situations and saying, I don't deserve this. I don't deserve these kinds of friends. I deserve better. Yeah, exactly. And I truly believe that actually me, because I, even though I knew I was, uh, I would give people advice and I'm like, I know, and I said it in my head, and I was saying, I know, I can say, I know that I need to listen to this too, but, <laughs> but I couldn't, and I was just avoiding it, <laughs> and it was, um, it was, so it was a case of that, I knew that I, it was, yeah, it's it funny, I was just avoiding a lot of things in my life, mm -hmm. and now I'm embracing the new embracing um because I, I was like a habit i liked certain things in certain boxes and now i'm kind of trying to break out of that so i um so i can put blurred lines like mix things together and be my true self and hopefully a lot of people would like like me in that way and the ones that don't i I'm sorry, but I'm not going to change. Good. Good. It's, we're, we're puzzle pieces. We don't fit with everybody. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What would you say are the top things that you've learned about yourself or learned because of this that make you so grateful that PNES happened in your life? What are the top things that you would say? I've learned that actually not everybody is going to like you. I've learned that actually from 
Um, you know, I, I've learned to, even though I thought, because even though I thought I accepted my, as in um, my disability, I think that I never really did. Does that make sense? My, um, and you're talking physical. about your PNES, you're talking about a, a different disability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And because, and because, and the reason why I thought that is because not people on the street would have, would have known my disability unless they really knew me. Mm -hmm. And um, it was like, as soon as I got PNS, it was like, whoa, they started to watch me more. And so then they realized that I have a disability because wow. I'm watching me. And, um, I, and it was the first time I actually thought that I, I felt disabled, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And it was, it was a shock. It was like, I was angry. I was angry that, um, I wanted to be in the background, but I couldn't be in the background. Mm. And um, so, yeah, I think I've learned to accept all of my disability, my hand, my leg, every, my body, my, just my mind. And I just think sometimes you, you're not going to make everybody happy. But the first thing that I thought that you need to do is make yourself happy. Mm -hmm. Because when you make yourself happy, the people around you, they're going to not fall into place, but they're going to, I can't think of the word, they're going to respect you more because you are actually, um, you're actually loving yourself. They can see that you are, actually real like you're not being fake mm -hmm. and I think that's really important well, I agree with you 100% if we don't love ourselves it is very evident to people around us and since we treat or we teach people how to treat us if we don't care about ourselves and we don't hold ourselves to a high esteem not being proud or better you know looking down on people but caring about ourselves if we don't do that, we're teaching other people that we don't care enough about ourselves to take care of ourselves. So they don't have to. Yeah, exactly. And um, yeah, so I started to put boundaries up. Mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm gonna, <laughs> I, I'm gonna say, I personally don't think they were wrong. Like it wasn't like I just started to put, um, just little, I needed to put boundaries up, especially at the time, because I needed to figure out how my number one thing is to get better, to to um, be able to function, because I, it was like three years, four years of my life was um, on hold. Mm -hmm. That's the best way I describe it. And so the, my number one thing is to, there's a reason why I'm having these, and there's a reason what what's going to come out of it. I knew I wasn't going to be the same person, and I didn't know what it would come, what I'd come out as. But I just knew I, I wasn't going to be the same. Yes. Yeah. And that was a, and I do, I do, I think that's a good thing. I think it's order in, in life you got to grow. Otherwise, you just stay a child, don't right? <laughs> you? And. I agree. We have so many opportunities to grow and we miss them because we don't see them as opportunities. We see them as catastrophes or, or terrible events that happen. And truly, we can turn anything into an opportunity. As hard as it is, we can do that. Whenever yeah. we fall, we can get back up. And we yeah. can dust ourselves off, look around and say, why did that happen? What inside of me uh, was a catalyst for that to happen. And sometimes we have things that happen to us that have nothing to do with us whatsoever. You had no control over your disability. So those are things that, again, it's a, still an opportunity, but there's nothing for you to, that you could have done to stop that because it, it was a way that you were born. Yes. So, I mean, it's just, I love the way that you see things. I love the way that you're looking at, at PNES as a way to grow and develop and 
you didn't look at it as this happened to me and you didn't stay stuck in any sort of victim mentality. You grew beyond it. You did. You definitely become that butterfly. Well, thank you. <laughs> but I still believe there's work to do. Um, yes. And <laughs> I'm excited on that work. And yeah. it's like, um, I, from this, um, I'll be like, from this um, PN, PNS, I've actually learned to um, be like filming myself on um, Facebook and that that wouldn't happen before. And it was, and that was like, um, I thought that was really amazing and people are liking it. And so it just shows that they want more from that. And uh, yeah, so I just think there's a work for me to grow and get better. It's like, a, it's a learning curve and I like to help people. So I'm like thinking maybe this way, I, but I also know that I need to have a balance. Yeah. So it's a case of knowing that balance as well. And so, yes, everything's a learning curve and I'm excited about that. <laughs> it is. We have a learning curve. It's, we, we don't have a manual. We have to uh, go through things and learn and, you know what I really appreciated about you is that you reached out to me years ago. And so you asked me my experience and then we reconnected uh, last year. And I just really appreciated you having you in my life and, and being able to see your growth path because I mean, you're seeing mine, you know, my, like you said, we're on a continual journey from birth to death. We're on a continual journey and it's full of opportunities to grow in who we are. So yes, we have this, this process of going from the, you know, that cocoon period that you were talking about of the isolating and, and learning who you really were and butterflies, you know, once you're a butterfly, you still have periods of rest. You, there are still things that you have to do to nourish yourself and, so I, I still do see you as a butterfly. So let me ask you a question. How how much time are you celebrating right now being seizure free? I would say um, seizure free, I'm going to say, I would say about a, a total seizure free, I'm going to say two, two weeks. So it's, it's not that long, but you know, I'm thankful for those days that actually, when I don't have like any um, any jerks or anything, it's like, but at the moment, I would say for about two months, it's been about just those little, you know, like shivers. Mm -hmm. So it's just been that, yeah. but it hasn't been like a full on seizure. So, I, I suppose I celebrate for like two months then if it's that. That's incredible. That is, and you know what, it is because I, I can verify that in my own process of, of overcoming PNES, it went from very violent shaking. And as I was growing, as those opportunities to reflect and see what was causing those, those people who were in my life, those environments I was in, those decisions that I was making, the things that I was doing to harm myself, as I address the same way, they went from very violent shaking to less violent. And then, so it was a trickle down. I really saw it just go down uh, as far as the intensity. So it, it is an incredible journey to be on. And I love that our body does this positive reinforcement where we are, you know, we, like you said in your experience that you reflected, you said, this happened right before, let me not do that. And you saw an immediate change. That is so important for people to hear. That is so important because it is going to take work and there's a lot of hope to give. As soon as we make some changes, we should be able to see, start seeing some results. And you know, like yourself, I had to give up different foods. Um, caffeine was the main thing that I was giving up, but I had to fix my sleep routine. I I needed massive repair to my sleep routine. My routine overall, my eating was very, very poor. So my eating's changed. Uh, you know, I found out recently because as we get older, I mean, it just happens. I don't know why it happens. <laughs> it's been explained a couple of times, but it's above my head. As we get older, our 
our um, sensitivities, our food allergies change. So in my late 30s, I developed a shellfish allergy. And just recently, I developed a wheat allergy. So there are things that I have to be cognizant about, just like you had to give up the potatoes and you gave up the caffeine and other things that maybe you didn't mention. But we have to be aware and take note. I felt bad after doing this. So I love what you were talking about when you talked about listening to your body and making those connections. Those are so important for everybody just to start journaling for themselves. And I love your appreciation about just having this and who you have become, who you're actually becoming because as a direct result of having PNES. And uh, I do appreciate so much you sharing about your experience as a foster child and those specific issues of avoidance that you didn't deal with. And you know what, to be honest, you might not even know that you were avoiding them to begin with, mm -hmm. so, but you made those connections later on. So is there anything that you would like to share with people who are watching uh, before we end? Yeah, I would say um, find out your trigger. And then once you find out your trigger, it, it is, it's like, wow. It's like, it's like you, you are on, I can't describe the feeling, but once you, it, it, it all put, makes sense to you when you find out your trigger. Mm -hmm. And I, I do, I believe that's the first step. And I, can I also say, um, sometimes your family don't understand or don't get, do not get it. Sometimes they believe that you're, um, even though they're not telling you, you just know, you just know sometimes they believe that you're faking. And I, and um, and that's what I, I believe that actually me distance myself from that. They, it, it, it was, it was, it was a good thing for me. So I'm just going to say sometimes you can love your family and you can also care for them. But sometimes you have to do the hard thing to just to survive a day. <laughs> that's the best one because that's what I was doing, surviving a day at a time. And yeah, I, I believe that sometimes, yeah, just, just look after yourself. Just think about yourself. One of the things that I've come to appreciate is the fact that we have choices, that we can choose a path. We have so many choices that we have that is not staying in the where we're at. So we can choose to go this route. We can choose to let this person in, this person out. We can choose to change our food. We can choose, but we just have to choose something. It could be something small, but we have to start somewhere. So it's a great opportunity today for everybody who's watching to ask yourself that question. What am I going to choose? And then get on your path and go. Monster, yeah. thank you so much for joining us. I'm so grateful to know you. I'm so grateful that you're in my life and that I get to see this journey of yours. And just thank you for sharing your wisdom. Thank you for letting me and um, hopefully see you again. <laughs> Absolutely. And hopefully we will. We'll have another conversation like this real soon. Okay then, thank you. Have a nice day.